Ricardo has, uh, comes from originally from Chile. Uh, he has studied in Chile and in Canada. Uh, he's, uh, um, at a certain time, he was a full professor uh, in the University of Chile. Uh, afterwards, uh, he decided to move uh, to Spain. He was full professor at the University of Barcelona. Afterwards, again, he was founding the research group uh, at IAU Research. And now he has a double position at the IAU Research and uh, uh, at the University of Barcelona. Uh, we are very glad that he has accepted to be uh, the, invited, the second invited talk of this uh, conference, CLE uh, 2010, because he is a very well-known scientist in the area. For example, many of us have studied his book on modern information retrieval. We use it as a textbook in the university. So we are very glad he has accepted to come here and to speak of a topic that is not a normal topic. So we are looking forward to what he's going to say to us and to discuss with him. Thank you very much, Ricardo, for coming. Thank you, Maristela, for the introduction, and, and thanks, Nicola, for the invitation. So when Nicola invited me, I said, are you sure? I mean, I don't work on evaluation. Yeah, I'm sure, so OK. And, and this was not a good week, because we are organizing PKDD ECML in, in Barcelona jointly with the Polytechnic of Catalonia. And I said, I shouldn't leave, although I was not the main person in the organization. But then Nicola insisted, on, and I like Padova, so OK, I'm here. But I will have to leave tomorrow, sorry. I have to be in the banquet of the other conference, too. <laughs> so this is the original title, but I should, I, I, the title should have been Web Retrieval Evaluation in Practice. I mean, that's what we do. We work on, on web search. And this is a very personal view of evaluation. So it's what I think is important. Maybe it's not important for you. But at least I have, I think, some good questions. So you know this, so I will go very fast. But just to highlight where I want to focus. So OK, you develop a new IR system. In our case, it's web search. You say, OK, we will try this with some date text collection. Uh, sometimes one is for real. Other times, one is just for evaluation. And then the first problem after you choose the collection is how you choose the queries. So the queries, at least, should be related to the collection, right? You don't always see that. And then after you choose the queries for, say, testing and also for training, if you're using something like machine learning, you get the, your results. You need to measure them. But first, at some point, users will deal with the results. How to measure? What to measure? Of course, why you want to measure? And for us, the main reason is to compare with other web search engines. And the question is how we can compare them especially in web search, where recall doesn't make too much sense. Only you have precision. So of course, the first thing is that queries are users are related. The queries should come from users. We should use real queries. And then one problem is how to sample them. And this is one of the topics I want to talk today, because it's less trivial than you think. Then of course, how you measure is related to the system you want to compare. We have to be fair with the other systems. So the question is, how we compare? Maybe you just need to do a relative comparison. You don't need to do an absolute comparison. You just, in web search, you just need to know, to know that you are better than the competition. So maybe the measure could be different. And I want, also want to talk about this. But at the end, I think that you see this trend in evaluation conference, and I, I I ask uh, some people in my team and in other groups that are, are working on this, what were the trends? What are the important things? And I think the main one is that the measures should be related to the users. So if we measure a system based on something that really is completely relevant to users, uh, the measure could be OK in that, that stand, but not really in practice. And for us, it should be practical. It should be the real thing. At the end, what we care is the satisfaction of the user. And the main problem is how to measure the satisfaction of the user. Something that we'll not talk about, but it's much more broader, is something we call the new science of user engagement. 
So for example, you do a query, you are happy with the first result, and in two seconds, you have a smile, right? In other places, you go, say, to a social network, you stay two hours, and also you have a smile. So how we can compare these two smiles? They're not time-based, depends on what you're trying to do, and this is a very hard problem. So how we can compare user satisfaction across different sites and say something about them, so you change the design, you change the interaction. So this is the, the, the context. So this is the agenda. So first I will talk about choosing the queries. And for that, you have to understand the long tail. Then you have to get the right answers. So if you want to have training data, how you build the training set. And then I want to talk about clicks. And I will talk about specific examples that we have done some work, image search. Then I will talk a little bit about measuring. I'm sure there are many experts here. I, I don't know any new measures, but there are some problems. Then I want to talk about comparing, and we have some work about comparing search engines. And then I, I think we can use the last 10, 15 minutes to discuss, because I think there are many open questions and many things that maybe you disagree. So I would like to argue with you. OK? And please, if you have questions in the way, please do, because I, I'm talking about different topics. So first, I already said, I do not do research in evaluation. So forgive me if I make a mistake. So let's go to the first problem, choosing the queries. You see all these papers in CIR, some with 10 queries, some with 50, some with 10, 20 million. And depends on the, the reviewer, the result will be different. You know that. Also, if you are the first to do that research, the typical review will say there is no evaluation. And you will say, yeah, but we are the first. How we can compare us to the rest of the world? And you have to do silly things. But I'm not talking about that problem. How to, do, how to be the first is even more difficult than this talk. So how many, how many queries? Of course, the answer for almost all my questions will be depends on the application, depends on what you want to do. So it depends also on many things. Many things are related. The users, the distribution of queries, you will see later. How is the interaction and so on. So suppose you get a number. Let's say we will get, I want to get 2,000 queries for training. Maybe you can do experiments to know how many queries. What's the reasonable minimal number you need to to get a meaningful result. Uh, although we have some work that I wanted to include that, but then I didn't include, include that even you can get meaningful statistical results, that doesn't mean anything. That you can find them, find them by random, by chance. So basically, maybe you found something better, but it's just you found it by chance. And if you do more experiments, you will see that you are wrong. So be careful. So after that, after we have, say, 2,000 queries that we will try to, to train and, and to judge, what type of queries? Popular queries, very frequent queries, or maybe the long tail, very rare queries, maybe queries that happen just once. In any sample, about 50% of the queries are unique. Easy queries, difficult queries. How you know that the query is difficult? Few answers, many answers. Long session, short session. And then, after you choose the type, which queries? So for example, I don't know, how track queries were selected? Who decided who were the right topics? Maybe someone knows. And also, you have side effects of the user interface. For example, if you do a misspelled query, then the answer will also include results for the right a spell of the word. What the search engine thinks is, thinks is the right spell of the word. Maybe you were writing the right word, it's in a different language, but it's very close to an English word, and the system changes that. So really, you are not evaluating the real answer. You are evaluating what the search engine thinks you are querying. And that's another problem. So usually, you, you, you cannot handle that very easily. If the editor is smart enough that to say, OK, I only, I only want the answers for the original query, then this is fine. But maybe there is a mis misspelling, and, and the query is wrong. So it's not trivial. And then 
maybe you need to delete that query. So for that, we need to understand the long tail. And, and this is the tail of the popular queries. So it's not really the long tail. But here you see in this uh, tag cloud what things are being tagged in Flickr. But these are all really uh, important tags, like the two main cameras, the places, what people do, like wedding, travel, partying, only having fun. Uh, Sometimes they work, but not for pictures. So let's look for the smallest one. So maybe we can say that England is in the tail of the popular queries. But really, the popular queries are thousands. And that will be the same for tags. So the question is, why do we have a long tail? And I want to, to show this recent result by colleagues of mine in the US, because I think it's a very important result, not only for evaluation, but for other things. So you know that many queries are very popular. So we have very high frequency, and also there are many, many, many that are really strange. So let's have this graph. So you have people in, in one axis and interest in the other axis. So interests are the queries. And this is one explanation of the long tail. This is the most trivial explanation. So normal people do normal queries, and we do the strange queries. It's good for us, this explanation, and we are the special people. But it's a bit sad, no? That we are only some people is, uh, I don't know, not normal. I will not say intelligent. What's normality? I cannot talk about that. 